This is ABTV, Animal Bites Television. For animal lovers, by animal lovers. Over the last 20 years, ball pythons have really arisen as one of the most popular snakes in the pet trade. Have you ever thought about breeding ball pythons? Oh, well, I've done yeah. shows in the past about specific ways to breed ball pythons, but today I want to simplify it and really talk about my philosophy behind breeding and what I'm looking for to have the most success. My name is Brian Barczyk. I'm no zoologist, just a guy with a passion for animals. And that passion often brings up questions. And I'm in search of answers. This week, the question is, what's the best way to breed ball pythons? You're watching Snake Bites. When it comes to ball pythons, size really does matter. I want to talk about <laughs> the size difference between males and females and when you can actually breed them. Now, to be honest with you, a normal ball python male, for me, I typically keep somewhere between six and 700 grams. This animal right here is about 700 grams, and it's about as big as most of my males are, because I notice that once you get about 800 or 1,000 grams, sometimes males can be a little bit lazy. Not all the time, but I like to keep them right in that seven gram range. Now typically you can get them to that size within seven to ten months believe it or not. Now this is a big banana bumblebee right here and he's about 900 grams so he's probably one of my bigger males and he's a year and a half old. Now what's really interesting is believe it or not male ball pythons can breed as young as four months of age. Now I've never bred it that young but I've had six month old males go this happens to be a four month old male right now. It's about 350 grams. It's not quite ready to breed yet. Again, 500 grams is where I typically say you have to be. But again, I've seen as low as 343 grams on the internet breeding, which is pretty incredible. But I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys something about males that make it important to be able to breed. And that's really their hemipenes. Now a baby like this that's only 350 grams, typically their hemipenes are relatively immature. You can kind of see right here, they're gonna be small and not very developed. Now, you can go to a male like this that's just about a month older. This is a male scalus head that's about 500 grams or so, and you can just see the difference in the hemipenes. It's already much thicker hemipenes, more adult looking. Now let's go back to that bumblebee banana really quick and take a look at this guy. Now this is a full-blown adult male here. And not only do you see the big adult hemipenes, but you also see those sperm plugs, which is really important when it comes to actual breeding. So that's basically it with males. You can breed them as young as three or four months old, but typically a year or year and a half old male is gonna get you a lot more bang for the buck. When it comes to females, <laughs> It's usually said 1,500 grams is where you want to be. And this girl right here is about 1,500 grams. And believe it or not, this is a double head albino sunset. So I'm pretty excited. I think that she'll actually breed this year. And she happens to only be 18 months old. So she'll be about two years old when she actually can lay her first clutch of eggs, which is pretty typical. Now, the youngest I've ever heard of a ball python breeding, believe it or not, has been 10 or 11 months old as a female. But that is extremely rare. Typically, 18 months is what you're going to really get to. And again, a girl like this is only 1,300 grams. She could actually potentially breed because you got to remember, I'm going to be feeding the snake through the breeding season. So she's 18 months old, 1,300 grams. I'm going to put her in the breeding cycle. And again, she's a cinnamon head sunset. So hopefully, we'll get some cinny sunsets maybe this year with a little bit of luck from the odds gods for sure. But typically, a two and a half year old female that's 1,800, 2,000 grams is gonna be your best bet for breeding. So that basically sums up the size and the age of animals. Let's move on to some other stuff. Okay, when we start talking about breeding really any snake, but in particular a lot of talk that you'll hear about ball pythons, you'll hear a term called follicles. Now basically what a follicle is, is a unfertilized egg that is basically starting to grow in the ovary area of a ball python. Now they'll start out at very small numbers. Typically when you see them on an ultrasound, they're about five or six millimeters. But as they grow, they can potentially become fertilized. And when that happens, they drop from the ovaries down into the overduct and actually become shelled and become an egg. But before we get too far into that, I want to talk about how follicles affect breeding. Now, someone that uses an ultrasound typically will start breeding at about 12 to 13 millimeters 
follicles, which is about the size of a small marble or a half inch of length, just to give you an idea of the size of that animal. Now that's typically when the breeding season will start for most people, but I'm in the camp that copulation can cause follicle growth. Mm, follicle. So if you have an animal that has under 12 millimeter follicles, oftentimes even just the presence of a male, even if it's not copulating, will actually cause the female to start to advance growing that follicle growth. I know it's a little bit of a weird thing, but I have seen so many times that females that just haven't been growing get a copulation or at least cycling males through, and next thing you know, bam, they're at 13 or 15 millimeters and the breeding process is well on its way. So when do you start breeding ball pythons? Well, the truth is ball pythons can actually breed pretty much 12 months of the year. They're really? kind of aseasonal breeders in captivity, but in the wild, they'll actually breed a very specific season. And what happens is there's a little bit of a cool down and then there's a rainy and dry season or monsoon season. So in captivity, you can actually cool down the temperatures a little bit and spur follicle and copulation growth. So for me, about mid-November to the end of November, I start to put males in with female. Cool the room off just by a couple degrees at night, cooling their heat tape off a couple degrees too, and then I start to switch males in with females' cages. And basically what I do is after I have my breeding plan of exactly what male goes in with which female, this male will go in with this female overnight. If I witness a copulation or if he's hooked up tomorrow, I leave him alone. If he only breeds today and then unhooks, I move him to a female tomorrow. Or if he hasn't bred at all, he goes into the next female's cage. I repeat this Monday through Thursday every single week so the male could breed as many as four females a week. Oh, it's a pretty yeah. good week for a male, right? But I always separate them out on Friday. Give them Friday, Saturday, and Sunday off. That way they can relax, get the stress down a little bit, as well as get a meal into them. Let's talk about feeding and how it relates to breeding snakes. I want to start with males because it's pretty important. I talked earlier how I typically keep my males about six or 700 grams, which is a little bit on the smaller side. So I basically maintain feed them once they hit adulthood because that baby can be really nasty. <laughs> it's a, this is a feisty little bugger, isn't it? You know, again, when they get a thousand grams, they can become a little bit lazy. So I want them to stay this way. But unfortunately, that means that it expends a lot of energy during the breeding season and you don't want your males to get too thin or stressed out. So let me tell you what I've noticed is that once a snake starts to breed, he will typically feed even a little bit more aggressively right in the beginning, almost like he's thinking, I have to put body weight on so that I have enough weight on me so that I can basically get through the breeding season and breed as many females as I possibly can. Oh, and that's kind yeah. of the whole idea of the topic of this show is to try to get inside the snake's head to kind of think like a snake, how would you be the most successful breeding them? And again, if you think about these guys in the wild, if they start to breed, if the males get too thin, they're not gonna be able to reproduce. And it's all about producing for future generations, isn't it, when it comes to wild stuff? So I'm thinking that way. So males will typically breed, feed really well right in the beginning of the breeding season. But then I notice usually about two months into the breeding season, males will go off of food. And once males are off of food, they start to lose weight. So basically what we do is we weigh our males just in the beginning of the breeding season. And then we don't pay too much attention to them for the first couple months as long as they're feeding well. But then after they stop feeding, typically at about two months into breeding, we keep a close eye on it. I've personally noticed, depending on the size, now this particular animal, it's a pinstripe calico, yellow belly, which is kind of interesting. It's probably a good 800 grams or so. So it's probably gonna go a little longer, but my deadline is typically 60 to 90 days after a male stops feeding and is breeding, you have to shelf that animal. And if you see a dramatic weight loss, that's the other time that you gotta shelf the animal because these guys will stress out and believe it or not, breed themselves to death. So keep that in mind with males, pretty simple. Keep an eye on their feeding. Once they stop feeding, you got about two months and you're probably gonna be done unless you got a really big fat male. As for females, these guys are pigs. The more you feed them, the better it goes. Let's go take a look at a couple. All right, so when it comes to females, it's all about aggressive feeding. I get asked all the time, how much should I feed my female ball python when I'm breeding it? And I always say, as much as she will absolutely take. Let's go back to what I was saying about the 
animal's head in the wild. Now, it just makes sense that if there's a scarcity of rodents, the female's probably thinking, why am I gonna produce babies knowing that my babies probably won't have a food source and will probably perish from a lack of food? On the flip side, if there's an abundance of food and she's getting fed just a ton, almost as much as she will possibly eat, she's thinking to herself, I go, let's go ahead and produce because my babies are gonna have an abundance of food and they're gonna thrive and live. It's just basically simple nature, isn't it? So that's the way I think about it. Now again, so I feed these females only every five to seven days, but as much as they all eat. Sometimes a female like this might get two or three medium rats just really bulking up during the breeding season. Now I think it's really important to get that on them and I've seen a huge correlation to the amount of food put into a ball python to follow growth. So let's go back to follicle growth for a second. Now you're at 12 or 13 millimeters follicles. How long do I breed a ball python? Well, they're going to typically grow about six millimeters per month. So essentially from 12 millimeters to 25 millimeters is gonna take about two to two and a half months. During that period of time, the female should be eating well, the male should be eating okay and continuing to breed. You probably wanna get one to two actual copulations during that period of time. Oh, yeah. At 25 millimeters, the female is gonna go off of food, she start to glow and she's gonna really cool seek. So again, pay attention to the cages because it's important to read the animals. If she's wrapping around the bowl and cool seeking, she's probably growing follicles. Once she's at 25 millimeters, she's gonna go off of food. Now this is a good sign because then the follicle development rapidly expands. They go from 25 to 45 millimeters, typically in about two to three weeks. Now they're gonna ovulate at 45 millimeters, which is about the size of a chicken egg. And if you've done your homework right, she's gonna go to the hot side of the cage, curl up, she's gonna get on that heat, incubate or gestate those eggs, for about 50 days, and then she's gonna lay her clutch. In between there, about 20 days after ovulation, you're gonna see a pre-lay shed, which again is approximately 30 days before you're gonna get a clutch of eggs. Let's face it, the goal is to produce some amazing, beautiful baby snakes, isn't it? I mean, even an animal like this killer bee is just such a gorgeous snake, and it never gets old to hatch these out. Now, when it comes to the time length that you might be breeding your ball pythons, I get asked all the time, how long do I breed? When do I stop breeding? The truth is, ball pythons are living animals, and there's no actual book that's gonna tell them when to start or stop breeding. So basically, you're not gonna overbreed the animal. Just continue putting that male in. If you're seeing copulation and you're seeing the things I talked about in this video, then just keep going. You're not going to hurt the animals as long as they're not overly stressed out. They're going to be completely fine. Breed it until you're sure your female is 100% gravid. Snake and when vicious. it comes to combinations, I get asked a lot, what should I put with what to make some cool new paint job? The truth is, guys, they're all cool and they're all ball pythons. So basically, work with the stuff that you're gonna be passionate about. Don't think about it as much about the return on investment. Think about it from a standpoint of what you wanna produce because I tell you what, there's no better feeling than seeing a little baby snake pip its head out of an egg. So I hope this kind of helps you with the kind of philosophy that I have when I'm trying to breed ball pythons and in particular, any snake at all. Good luck and happy breeding season. For this week's Reptile Report Spotlight, we'll be highlighting field hurt forms. Go ahead and check out the URL down below or click on the link in the description. So there it is. I hope you guys enjoyed the show and understand some of the philosophies that I use when I'm breeding ball pythons. And as that python breeding season commences here, I'm always Facebooking and tweeting my way through what I call python porn. Oh, yeah. So follow me over at Snake Bites TV. Until next week, you've been watching Snake Bites. Hi, I'm Peter Birch, an Aussie bloke who loves wildlife. My respect for nature started when I was a young boy in rural New South Wales. Since then, it's exploded into an obsession. New episodes only on Animal Bites TV.